Revelation chapter 21 is one of the highlight chapters of the entire Bible. Time now ceases to exist. Eternity has begun. There is a new heaven and a new earth and a new city, the bride, the holy city, New Jerusalem, and we're living there. This makes the chapter unlike any other previous chapter in the entire Bible. And so to crown it, God gave it 27 verses to correspond with the 27 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. You see, each Hebrew letter has a meaning. And sure enough, this chapter follows the meanings of the 27 letters. Now, there are 22 letters with five letters that are derived from previous letters that be, have become prophecies, and these are the fulfillments of those prophetic letters. So the five final forms in the last five verses of the chapter, we're going to see the ultimate culmination of all of the great prophecies of time as we are now slipping into eternity. So when we come to verse 12 on today's program, we see that there is a great and high wall of the city that John has come to see, and 12 gates, 12 angels, and the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Gary Stearman is here to discuss with me this incredible holy city. Mm. And J.R., one of the things we have to say right up front is that many today regard Revelation, and particularly this chapter, uh, as perhaps a fanciful tale that was sort of written as a, um, almost like a short story or a novel uh, about a happy ending, and the people would be with God, and they would be living in this fantastic city. And, and in other words, they regard this as kind of a fabricated story to give everybody hope. My view, and I know that JR's view, is that this is, some, this is actually something that was witnessed by the Apostle John. And he's simply telling us what he saw, and, and we take it in that, in that light. In other words, this is real. And this is something that is, is so beautiful and so real. In that spirit, we're attempting to convey this uh, to you. And here in verse 12 of Revelation 21, we have 12 gates, 12 angels, names written on the gates, the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You know, J.R., the names written on the gates are the history, in a way, the redemptive history of mankind is written on those gates. Yes. And the chosen people are yes. written there. Right. Now, you know, some Christian theologians have said that the Bride of Christ is New Testament Christianity. When you get right down to it, the church is not the only Bride of Christ. Uh, the church doesn't have just New Testament Christianity in it. That's All true. the Old Testament saints were saved at Calvary, too. They were saved and resurrected, I believe, there at Calvary. Uh, when Jesus rose again three days later, uh, he took captivity captive. He took all the Old Testament saints to heaven, gave them eternal life, took them into the presence of God. They live in the holy city. And so uh, the Old Testament saints are as much a part of the bride as the New Testament saints. Mm -hmm. Why, their names are written on the gates. Absolutely. And. Uh, and, and Gary, this is the lament. This is the teaching. This is something we need to be taught. New Testament Christianity needs to teach this. And if you stop and think about it, the New Jerusalem will stand as a teaching emblem or a teaching sim. sim. Anyone who sees it throughout eternity is going to see those names. And, and the people who look upon that city are going to say, those names are there for a reason. Uh, never again will Israel be forgotten. Yes. Now, the names of the apostles we learn in the next verse are written on the foundation. So we've got the 12 apostles and the 12 tribes here. Let's read these together, verses 12, 13, and 14, uh, starting with 12, and uh, had a great wall, uh, a wall great and high, and had 12 gates, and the, at the gates 12 angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, verse 13, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates, verse 14, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now this is interesting because it's kind of upside down almost when you look at it, or at least to, to our Western eyes. In right? other words, you would think that the 12 apostles' names should be on the gates and the 12 tribes of Israel should be the foundation of the yes. law, right? But not so. It is the other way around. Because you see, the foundation was laid at Calvary, not in the call of Abraham. 
not at Sinai with the giving of the law. Mm. Uh, the foundation rests in grace, not law. So what we have, I think, is the pathway into the city came through the tribes, oh, where they produced yeah. the Messiah. I love that idea that the, this city is founded upon grace. It is not founded upon law. That, now that's a profound thought. Yes. So we have this incredible set of verses here, 12, 13, and 14. Listen, we've, we talked about the Lamed. Let's talk about the Mem for a moment. Mem stands for the revealed as seen in the four sides with three gates on each side of the city as seen in verse 13. And the Nun is the symbol of faithfulness and soul as seen in the 12 foundations containing the names of the 12 apostles in verse 14. Mm -hmm. So we've got a, a, um, an alphabetic rendering here that is absolutely right on target. Yes, indeed. Lamet, the teacher, teaching us about Israel. Mem, the revelation, in which we have the geographic, if you will, layout of these gates, three on each side in the directions of the compass, and J.R., this would represent uh, four sides, the number four being emblematic of the kingdom of God, but also it takes us all the way back to the days of Moses, tabernacle in the wilderness with the tribes laid out on the, the four sides of the tabernacle like the points of a compass. In, in other words, it takes us all the way through the redemptive history of mankind, all the way through the Temple of Solomon, mm -hmm. uh, the second temple, uh, this reminds us of the temple of God, the structure thereof, and the wall has 12 foundations laid out this, with the same structure, and the apostles are given, uh, if you will, the foundational idea of faith. Uh, the firmness of our foundation lies in the faith of the apostles. I just love that idea. Mm -hmm. It was those 12 men who gave their lives to take the gospel to the whole world. Yeah. And so upon uh, the basis of the gospel they preached, we see the 12 foundations and the names of the 12 apostles there. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the size of the city in verse 15, Gary. Yes. Tell us about it. He talked with me, verse 15. He taught, and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And J.R., this uh, measuring of the city, the 15th verse, is the letter Samic. Mm -hmm. And this is so great, because Samic is the, the letter, it's circular in structure, and it reminds us of a, a protective enclosure. Uh, God on all sides, uh, with His redeemed in the middle. Uh, he surrounds them with, uh, uh, with a kind of protective barrier. And here we have uh, uh, someone measuring the city and yeah. establishing its perimeter, which I think is just amazing. God's protection, God's provision for yeah. His people, the perfect psalmic. It is. And then there's Ain. We're going to have to park here for a while, Gary. Yes, Ain is mm -hmm. the symbol of sight and insight. It stands for the physical eye, sight, and for the mind's eye, insight, and is symbolized, get this, is symbolized by the eye of God. Mm. And here we've got the holy city of New Jerusalem as a pyramid, and we've got the iron at the top of it, Gary. Now, I realize that there may be some folks out there that are balking right now and saying, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, what do you mean this all seeing out at the top of the pyramid? Uh, folks, that came from somewhere, and it was not hell, it was heaven. And uh, I think it's important that we understand that the holy city of New Jerusalem was God's original concept of the pyramid. And from it came the Great Pyramid and all the mm -hmm. other pyramids, including the Tower of Babel, which was a counterfeit pyramid. Absolutely. And, and Satan has appropriated the truths of God, uh, the all-seeing eye being a kind of a symbol of Illuminism uh, uh, is one of those counterfeits. But the truth lies here in the city of God. And the city lieth four square. The length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed. 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Wow. Yes. Now we've got something to talk about. Length, breadth, and height. Okay. You know this little word four square? Yeah. It is, it is given in the first part of the verse that deals with the length and width of the city. Mm -hmm. It is not a part of the last part of the verse which deals with the height of the city. So there are a lot of theologians, good and honest men, who think that the city is a cube. 
Uh, now, the moon is a sphere. Can you imagine a cube sitting up there in, in the heavens? Uh, of course, it, uh, you know, it's not much different than the pyramid, but let's face it. I'm convinced that it is a pyramid because it is called the Great and High Mountain. And in Isaiah 2, 2, the mountain mm -hmm. of the Lord's house. So it's, it's an awesome concept. We, we're going to have to uh, deal with it more in just a moment. So uh, right after this word, so uh, stick around. We'll be right back. Gary, the very verse that gives us the length and the width and the height of this mm -hmm. city corresponds with the iron, mm -hmm. the eye. That has to be a pyramid with mm -hmm. the eye of God, the throne of God mm -hmm. at the top of it. It's got to be very symbolic as mm -hmm. is seen throughout the history of man. If it's a pyramid, as you suggest, and I, 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 th I believe I go along with this, we've done a lot of thinking about it, and over the years it's just, our thinking has moved in this direction to the point that we're almost solidified there now. If this is a pyramid, and you talk about height, you come to the, the apex of the pyramid, the absolute peak. You talk about the capstone, then, of the pyramid. And by the way, that capstone, J.R., has much metaphoric significance in and of itself. That capstone is, uh, shall we say, a picture of Christ all the way through the, through the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, I realize that there is an evil connotation to this, mm -hmm. uh, the so-called Illuminati and the secret societies that have used the pyramid. But remember now, there was a, there was a Tower of Babel that men tried to use to usurp uh, God's concept of heaven. Mm -hmm. And uh, the devil never invented anything. He only steals what God invents and God creates. And so I, I see this... Um, and, and I say this because when the uh, Great Pyramid was examined back 500 years ago, they found sediment of salt inside the pyramid and up, uh, uh, I guess, more than halfway up the pyramid, uh, residue of uh, water mm -hmm. and uh, all of the things that would go with that. So, in other words, the Great Pyramid was built before the flood. Yes. And that's the only way to explain it. It sits in the middle of a desert today. And the fact is the pyramid, uh, the design of the pyramid is so reflective of the things of God. This has been called out by so many people down through the ages. Uh, it's such a spiritual monument, if you will, to the glory of God, not to Satan, that, that it had to be built by men uh, who yes. had communed with God closely. Now I can tell you, if you go back into the past, into our previous publications back in the 1970s, 1980s, you will find that I was absolutely against the Great Pyramid. I thought it was demonic from the core. Mm -hmm. But I came to learn that because it went, because it was built before the flood, that it absolutely had to be heaven sent. There's too many things about the Great Pyramid that cannot be explained otherwise. Now, I'm not talking about all the pyramids around the world. They probably were more Towers of Babel. Mm -hmm. But the Great Pyramid itself uh, seemed to be heaven sent. Now, let's talk about the New Testament. This has 27 verses in it. The New Testament has 27 books in it. And I want you to know the iron is at the core of the entire New Testament. Insight. Insight. It's at the core. Mm -hmm. And we have the, the, the mysteries of the Bible. 22 mysteries. Mm -hmm. are actually, 22 times the word mystery used singular is used in the New Testament, and five times it is used in the plural, which is a total of 27 times, and the ion stands at the apex of that pyramidal shape. As a matter of fact, the, the ion uh, mystery is in 2 Thessalonians, in the passage <clears throat> about the man of sin who stands up and exalts himself in the temple of God, calls himself God. In other words, the abomination of des desolation. And we have in 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Now, J.R., that is the iron mystery mm -hmm. in the New Testament. Uh, that is the 16th. 16th time the mystery, the word mystery is used. In the That's New right. Testament. And therefore, it's represented by the letter iron, and it's the mystery of iniquity, exactly what we're talking about here. The fact that, that the uh, all-seeing, if you will, the omniscient eye of God has been taken and counterfeited by Satan, 
Uh, he desired to be like the Most High, and he still tries to represent himself as the all-seeing eye. Mm -hmm. Gary came in one day and he said, let me show you something. And he, he, he laid out this structure on paper, a three-dimensional view of these 27 mysteries of the New Testament. And the iron stood right at the apex of a pyramid. Indeed it does. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? it, it, it it's incredible, but it, it, it solidifies the idea, the idea that this is real. We're not talking about mm -hmm. fiction here. We're not talking about somebody's fantasy of some mythological holy city. We're talking about a, a reality that was witnessed by John. And I'm sure that John didn't even understand all of what he was talking about. He yeah. simply came back, reported what he saw, and it is for us to uh, attempt to uh, make some meaning of it. You know, if I could convince you of what we have discovered here, it would take several programs. Uh, I'd be willing to, uh, to, you know, try and try and try and try. But um, if, if the Holy Spirit hasn't revealed it to you, there's no need for us to go any further. Let's move on to the pair. The pe yes. is, along, is the mouth, the iron is the eye, the pe is the mouth, the, the next uh, letter and the next verse. It's the symbol of speech depicted by the wall around the holy city as described in verse 17. The wall is only 144 cubits high, maybe uh, 250 feet, something like mm -hmm. that, about the height of a 25 story building, but what is that compared to a city 1,500 miles high? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, if so you can imagine. What is this wall? Yeah, try, try to think of a 1,500 mile tall pyramid with a little wall around its base that's 250 feet high, and that wall is made <clears throat> of jasper. Uh, I'm going to read verses 17 and 18. He measured the wall thereof, 144 cubits, uh, around 250 feet, according to the measure of man, that is of the angel, and the building of the wall of it was uh, of jasper, and the city was uh, pure gold like unto clear glass. So here we have this declaration of the height of the wall in the, with the letter Pe. And then in the next verse, which is Tzadi, and the building of the wall was like Jasper. What mm -hmm. in the world is Jasper, we ask? Well, you know, Jasper is a, is a beautiful stone. Uh, it's uh, a derivative of quartz, and um, it means Let's see, uh, jasper, it's opaque variety of quartz. Here it's called clear as crystal, however. So this is a different type of jasper it's speaking of here. Comes sometimes in various colors of green, red, yellow, white, so on. My choice would be red, but others have suggested green. I don't know about that. Yeah. But the, the fact that the wall is a jasper uh, speaks of the throne of God in chapter 4. We see it's like jasper as well. So here we're, we're laying the parameters of the throne of God. Mm. This gigantic city, the throne of God, sits at the very top of this city. Mm. And J.A. Size suggested that the meaning of jasper was uh, coming to be to bruise or to be bruised, speaking of the Son of Man. Yes. Well, there's a lot to see here. Um, we're going to have to get into all of these uh, various stones and their meanings and the last five verses, the, uh, the final forms of the prophecy and on our next program. But uh, I want you to notice that the gates are of pearl and the walls are of jasper and the streets are of gold and the foundation has all of these uh, various elements of uh, aluminum and quartz and magnesium uh, alloys and crystalline uh, type uh, precious stones. And so what I see here is, is the finest of the finest, the very best God mm. has to offer. And it's you know, J.R., we have the structure of the city <clears throat> and now with a wall. Now, metaphorically, a wall and, and actually, physically, in the old days, a wall would be built around a city for protection. Mm -hmm. If this wall of Jasper, small though it may be, is built for protection, it would mark the perimeter of God's protection over this city, if you will. It would be like a spiritual barrier, uh, like an extension of his throne out to the edges of the city, perhaps. And yet, there's, there's no evil left. It's all gone. It's all been thrown in the lake of fire. So yeah. I think this wall is metaphoric. It deals with speech, the pe, and uh, from the wall comes pronouncements. That's what the wall was, you know, in the temple. There was a place on the south 
western corner of the wall for the blowing of the shofar, gathering of the people, called them to prayer, mm. and the pronouncements of the reading of the scriptures from the wall. And so I think uh, the wall here is symbolic of the teaching and preaching of the gospel and teaching of the word of God. Mm. And um, I think that's what the wall is for. And it's represented by the letter peh, which is the speech and the mouth yes. uh, in the Hebrew uh, way of reckoning. Indeed. And of course, there are 12 gates in, uh, in uh, 1,500 miles, 1,500 miles, 1,500 miles, 1,500 miles. Not enough gates if that's the only way we get in and out of the city. That's true. We'll have to talk about that on our next program. We'll be back in just a moment.